We are here with John Levy, who is the CEO of Score Media and Gaming, a company that has been around a while listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and most recently has IPO'd on NASDAQ. Um, and uh, John, welcome to Emerging Insights. Frank, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, John, why don't we begin by you providing an overview to everyone of who SCORE Media and Gaming is. Well, that's, a, that's terrific because, um, uh, you know, we're a bit different than what you would expect a company like ours getting into the gaming space. And, uh, you know, this has been a, 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 a lifelong sort of uh, dream and path for us. You know, I won't go, I'm not going to bore you with the whole history because I grew up in the cable business in Canada. And that morphed into the TV business in Canada. We launched a TV network called The Score. Actually, it was Headline Sports, and it became The Score in the mid-90s. And it was a really cool digital sports network. It had, a, it had data on a screen. It had a ticker on the bottom with the odds on it. Um, it was pretty irreverent. And it spoke to a much younger audience. And it, you know, it really speaks to what our brand was all about, which was you know, an open and honest approach to sports. So, for example, when we were covering games, when our guys on our desk were covering games. First of all, they weren't button down shirt and tie guys. They were guys like Frank, you and I'd go to a bar with or watch a game with, right? And when, when they're watching a game and somebody kicks a useless field goal to take it over a, 50, you know, a 14 or 17 point spread, you know, the other guys are tightening their ties and looking at each other saying, oh, I think that's interesting to some of the audience. Our guys are ripping their freaking hair out because they probably just blew a, a $50 bet. And it was, it was that open and authentic approach to sports in general, but sports betting specifically, that really resonated with our audience. And, you know, the TV network grew and grew and we incubated this digital existence inside of it. We were actually one of the first people, you know, to, 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 to create an app. And it was really, you know, I, I'd like to think we're really smart, but what we really, because we're pretty smart, but what we really did was we just sort of followed our audience into that young audience into the mobile di digital tech technology land. So our first app was actually, and not going to date us, Frank, but you and I remember the flip phone, the razor, and that, that was really the first one we were on. And then this little other Canadian company called BlackBerry showed up with a real device. So, we, you know, we ported it to, 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 to RIMS BlackBerry. And then iOS shows up and Android shows up. And so we really incubated this mobile existence inside of our media company. And it was, it was really cool because it was the way people were starting to now consume content and specifically sports content, right? So the TV network grew, became profitable. We incubated this thing inside of it. Nobody knew what the heck we were doing. And uh, along came Rogers, who I'm sure you've probably heard of. They bought the TV asset, but because it was Rogers, we got lucky. So we were able to keep our brand, which was the media, which was the uh, score app and became the only company really in North America, sports media company to be exclusively hundred percent mobile. And, um, you know, and, and that's, that was really the big, the beginning of, of what we were setting the table for, for getting into to the new space. And, you know, uh, we had a hugely engaged audience. We knew we'd kick butt in Canada with this digital presence because we were the, you know, the score. Everybody had to move the score. But what surprised us was we were getting downloads six, eight to one coming out of the States. So we knew we had something that was working. It was resonating with this younger audience. We, we ended up having the second or third, depending on what day of the week it is, most popular app in North America. So ESPN, your ESPN was out in front. And then, you know, we were in front of all the other traditionals, the NBC, the CBS, the Yahoo's, all these other guys who shouldn't have let us get where we got, um, were behind us. And, and you, know, you know, not only do we have this high level of engagement, high number of users, but we knew from our history that if you love sports and you're a sports addict, what are you going to do? You're probably betting on sports, right? So, you know, we, that was our sort of, under you know we knew who our audience was they were telling us who they were you know they're on our app and on a sunday afternoon they're banging it a hundred times you, you know they're watching the game you know they're trying to get the scores as fast as they can on a monday night or thursday night so so we knew who our audience was we knew we had a huge gaming population within our media app we knew they loved our app we had a footprint all across north america and you know we just hoped and prayed at some point and i know i'm going on here but the history is important uh that that that, that you know that sports betting would become legal. And, you know, we never wanted to, we, we, you know, we're, pub, first of all, we're a public company. So we never want to get involved in the black market in the States or the gray market in Canada. We wanted to buy our time and hope and pray at some point, the governments and the regulators would wake up and say, 
you know what, we, why don't we just regulate tax and license these guys? Because all these dollars are floating up to heaven. Sports betting clearly is something that people want to do. And, and, you know, PASPA fell and that was our aha moment. And that's when we said, that was the second big moment for us. Okay. The second big moment. Cause what we could have done is we could have said, okay, let's just, you know, be, you know, let's let all these other guys, the DraftKings, the fan duels, everybody else who's jonesing to get into the betting market, let them add our user base, let them pay us a fortune and we'll just market it and use it. We'll become a super affiliate. And you know what? It just didn't seem real to authentic enough to us. We said, you know, we spent all these years building this brand. We got all these people who love to bet on sports. Why the hell are we going to just lease it out? Let's, let's go all in. And we did. So we, be, we decided we're going to be the betting operator. And to the point where we are the only digital sports media company who's, I don't like the word bookie, but we're the only one who's actually a sports betting operator. And that's the unique position we're in. And, you know, the I don't want to say the rest is history, but I'm going to talk all for 20 minutes, but I'll let you ask a question now, but that's how we got to where we are. And that's why we're so excited about the opportunities, both South and North of the border. The rest is not history. The rest is the, is the future. It's the future. You're absolutely right. By the way, I do remember flip phones, uh, but, but I even remember when we had Becky, the operator, and we dial her <laughs> up and say, Becky, can you contact? <laughs> Becky, can you place a bet for me? No. <laughs> and so we arrive at this day. Yes. When sports betting is proliferating in the United States. Yes. And you see this opportunity south of the border for a very large market. Absolutely. You decide to uh, IPO in the United States and help facilitate your growth here. You gross $186 million in your IPO. Right. Uh, so what is your plan now to capitalize on this great opportunity? Well, you know, I guess a couple of things, Frank. I mean, number one, I think we're very uniquely positioned, but even prior to the IPO, right? We, you know, uh, we're a public company in Canada. We raised funds. We launched in the U.S., you know, in front of last year's NFL season, and we got caught with the whole COVID situation. And we were very fortunate because we had enough funds that we didn't have to furlough anybody, no layoffs. We could continue to, you know, develop our unique product, which I want to talk about because it really is a differentiated approach than everybody else. And, um, you know, so, so, you know, we launched in four states. We're in New Jersey, Indiana, Colorado, and just launched in Iowa. We knew imminently, and we can talk about this too, that Canada is about to open up. Um, you know, and we're sitting right here in Ontario, the equivalent of the fifth largest state, you know, basically in the U.S., huge revenue potential, you know, Ontario alone, 1.5 to 2.2. And we're conservative in terms of the billions of dollars that are available to us by 2025 in this. So, you know, we, we, we launched and, you know, we were pretty aggressive in terms of what we thought was going to happen in the U.S. in terms of states rolling up um, faster than most people. And it's only natural. I mean, you know, each, you know, every state, north and south of the border, everybody's starving for cash. Everybody's spending crazy amounts to keep people working, to keep people alive. And, you know, you've got all this revenue sitting there right under your nose and, you know, obviously an easy way for governments to go at it. So we anticipated it was going to happen more quickly than others, which created all these opportunities for us. And, you know, that, that's really one of the big reasons we decided that it was time for us to, you know, to, to, to really, I like to say, put our big boy pants on and, and, you know, uh, you know, launch in the U S on, on NASDAQ. And, and we did this very successful IPO, um, uh, you know, with the help of major banks, you know, we brought in new institutional investors that, that really couldn't get access to us, even though we we're a public company and raising lesser amounts of money up in Canada. Uh, we had a, ter a terrific run, met a whole bunch of great people, brought a whole bunch of new people into our company. And it really puts us in a position to be able to execute on the model and, and take, take advantage of all these opportunities. And, um, you know, extremely well timed for us because, you know, we're up against the big guys. Our model is completely different. You know, we didn't raise the money to, to spend like drunken sailors and just go and try and buy our way into the market. That's not our business model, but you still obviously need sufficient capital to be able to, to get access into the States, to run all the promotions that you want to run and to do all of the things that we're going to do. So I think we're very, very well positioned now to be able to execute on the model that we have. You, you touched on Canada and the potential, and I saw where DraftKings just the other day has uh, estimated uh, Canada as a $5 billion uh, sports correct. betting market, uh, and it's your home turf. That so is tell correct. us about your plans in Canada should the, the country legalize full-fledged sports betting. So this is something that we've been working on 
for a while. I mean, this is, as I said, this is our home turf. Everybody knows us up here. You know, if you, if you take our version of TSN with uh, ESPN, which is TSN, and I think they still own a part of it actually. And Sportsnet, which is owned by Rogers, the two other big, you know, media companies in Canada, their digital presence, add them together, multiply by two. They don't, they don't compare to us. Um, ESPN up here, we're like 10 times them. And the other guys that are all jonesing to get in the DraftKings and everybody else, they don't even show up on the radar. So, so, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that's, that's what we built. That's, that's what it is. And, and um, you know, we obviously believe that, that, that it's a huge opportunity for us, not only because the people know us and they love our brand, but because of the way that we're going to, the way that we were introducing sports betting in the U S and in Canada. And it's really a holistic approach to it. You know, like, like Frank, you know, most of the betting pla are just betting platforms, right? I mean, whether it's, a bet 365 or FanDuel or DraftKings and all these guys are trying to figure out ways to create stickiness and they're doing these you know partnership deals with media companies and with casinos and they're trying to figure out you know because what they know is really a big problem for them because you know it's not just about getting the customer it's about keeping the customer and it's about generating re as much revenue as you can from the customer and it's always been our philosophy that that, you know, to, to basically be, and it gets back to the TV days, what I was saying, sports betting is nothing more than just one of the reasons why people love sports. So if they're in our app and they're looking at a box score or if they're chatting or if they're doing anything else, and then they get this inkling that they, maybe they want to make a bet, why force them to go somewhere else? Let them build the, bet, bet, build the bet slip inside the app. Let them do things in our bet section that create this, all these opportunities. Now, of course, it's got to be a separate app because you got to get licensed in each state, but it's really this integrated holistic approach to sports betting that really separates us from everybody else. And we're seeing success with that in the U S and in Canada, it's going to be success on steroids because everybody really loves the app and is totally engaged with the app. So, you know, we, you know, it, it really is, you know, our, I don't want to say ours to lose because I hate the word lose, but really, you know, we do have this special relationship up here and, you know, we're going to take full advantage of it. And, uh, you know, we, listen, we expect to be over time a market leader in the States too. I don't want to diminish that. I mean, that's the bigger market, obviously. We're excited about Ontario because it's huge and the rest of Canada as well. And, and uh, you know, our numbers are, are the same as what, you, you, what you're talking about in terms of Canada. I, I, I talked about just Ontario alone, but, but um, you know, it, it really is this tremendous opportunity. And again, getting back to your earlier question, that's one of the reasons why we want to make sure we are fully armed and capable and ready to, to take our rightful place in Canada and, you know, keep clipping at the heels of those guys of the U S because they don't, you know, they don't see us coming. And, and, and that's kind of the way we've done business our whole life as this um, thing that appealed to the end user and, and wasn't trying to force anything on the end user. And I wasn't worried about legacy assets and, and just trying to make life easier for people who love sports and love to bet on sports. Um, you, you've alluded to this a second ago, but maybe we can elaborate on it a little further. In the United States, you have some very, very, very big competitors. Mm -hmm. it's a Penn National, which combined with uh, Barstool, has tens of millions of pe people in their database. And William Hill, Caesars, that has you know, 60 million or more people in their database, uh, as well as the financial resources that they have, the head start that FanDuel and and DraftKings have had, and the big market shares. How do you intend to compete in that environment? You know, I think, well, first of all, we've never been shy. We've never shied away from competing. Um, you know, I, I, I hate to answer a question with a question, but I mean, one thing I'll point out is, you know, we've actually done that in the mobile space with our app. Like, there's no reason our mobile app should be as prevalent and prominent in the US as it is. And, and the reason for that is because we're touching something that I think the other guys are missing. And, um, you know, yes, you know, they're going to come at they, they are coming at it with huge bankrolls, and they're buying their way in. But what they don't, I think, appreciate is really what 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 really is going to win out in the end, to be quite honest. And I think, you know, for, what's going to win out in the end is, you know, is this relationship with the customer. And, providing the customer with what he wants. And, and in our case, uh, you know, it's all about the engagement and it's all about retention and it's all about the ecosystem. And um, 
you know, we, we are at that crossroads. We are media and we're betting and it's, it's, it's one brand. I mean, yes, it's score bet and score media, but it's really one brand. And honestly, Frank, I wouldn't trade our user base with any of those guys, with any of the databases you're talking about, whether it's, you know, millions and millions of people who've been sitting in casinos playing slot machines for years and years who are an aging population, or even, you know, I, Honestly, even, you know, the DFS days, the, the daily fantasy user. I mean, and I know there's crossover in the DFS world to, to, uh, uh, to sports betting, but I don't think there's any that are better than the database. I don't even think about it as a database. I think about it as active users. These guys are taking our information. They're taking our data in Canada right now, and they're going embedding elsewhere. And in the U.S. and in states that we're not on, where we have users, hundreds and thousands of users in each community, in each city, millions, in fact, and, and, you know, they're, they're loyal to us. They love our brand and then they go and bet elsewhere. So for us, it's about, it's about introducing sports wagering in a way that's completely natural to them. And um, I think that's something that we can do that the other guys aren't doing and probably don't have a focus on. I think they're starting to think about it. I mean, you know, you listen to some of the reports and they're saying, you know, I've heard some of the big guys saying, you know, it's, it's all about how much capital I've had and how much marketing money I can spend and how many hot dog eating contests I can, I can, uh, you know, I can, I can uh, sponsor. And, and for us, it's completely the opposite. Us, it's, it's building gradually. It's, in, in it, and I don't have to tell you how big the market is. You don't, you know, even if you could, I, I, you know, can you sustain 30% market shares over time on a state by state by state basis? I have no idea. That's not our business model, but you know, there's plenty of opportunity here for, you know, high single digit, low single digit um, um, uh, penetrations on a state by state basis uh, to, to be a very, very successful business. And again, it's, it's, you know, you know, build it properly, build it sustainably. And, and that's how we built our, all our business. That's how I built the cable business originally. I was a small independent cable guy in the, in the sixties with my dad. That's how we built the TV network in Canada. And that's how we're building, you know, our whole digital presence. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not for today. It is for today and it is for tomorrow, but it's not a quarter by quarter thing. This is really uh, trying to build this thing and going to be building this thing for uh, a really long sustainable future. And, you know, down the road, we are, you know, we honestly believe that we're going to be one of the top tier players in the U S and for sure in Canada. One of the, you know, you've mentioned several times now, John, about the, the enormous amounts of money that some of these companies are paying paying right. for customer acquisition and to acquire market share. Yep. Uh, yet even co companies that are focused on profitability, like Churchill Downs, like you, like Rust Street International uh, Interactive, yep. uh, have got to spend money to for enter sure. these new markets. Uh, at what point does SCORE become profitable on an EBITDA basis? So that's a really good question and probably a question my guys would kill me if I was starting to answer it uh, to you, uh, as, you're, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and I think, you know, really how we look at it is we look at, at, at on a state-by-state -state basis, what's working and, you know, what type of betters are we getting, how many of them are getting, and we don't report that on a state-by-state on a -state or month-by-month -month basis. But, you know, we, we look at the, the indications as to where success is coming from, and we do see it in that our guys are betting more than we anticipated. We see that in the longevity of our users, because now we're getting some experience. They're staying with us longer. We're also seeing it in the, in the, in the context of the fact that I think something like 50% of all of our score bet users are also score media users. So what that's telling us is that the ecosystem is, is working. So, and I, and I think really the, 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 to be as specific as I can in answering the question, which I, which I can answer, but is, is really wholly dependent on the speed of the rollout because you know, we're in four states now. Am I hoping that doubles over the next you know, 12 to 18 months or sooner? Yes, are we working on that? You know, and that only gets us in eight states or nine states or 10 states. You know, our goal is to be in, you know, there's, there's probably opportunity for us as this unfolds and as it, you know, becomes online. And I'm not even talking about Canada, you know, you know, three to five years, I, you know, we want to be in 30, 35 states as, as this opens up. So, um, but you have to invest in each opportunity as, as they come up. It's like kind of, it's like opening a store, right? In the old retail days, you know, I got a great stores in New York. I want to open in Philly. I want to open in Miami. You know, those companies, you know, show profitability once they get to scale and once they're, you know, tracking across. So 
the irony is you're probably profitable sooner than later if you don't roll out that fast. But but that's not the game. The game is to and, and to take advantage. And and the other the only other thing I'd say to that, Frank, is that you know from our perspective, it, you know we can whether it's today, tomorrow, a month from now, six months from now, twelve months from. Now, you know, from a from a user standpoint, our users are there. If we don't get to to, I don't know. I don't want to say a state because I don't want because everything's coming on board sooner than you thought. But Utah, for example, where people push that off way into the distance. If that takes five years to get to, we still have our users in Utah, right? And and you know, you know, Texas, California, New York, uh, you know, just keeps going. And and you know, we we you know, we want these things to come online sooner than later. Um, and, and a lot of that will dictate how soon we're going to be profitable. But, you know, m you know, I look at the numbers with my financial team and, you know, it's, it's astounding when you look at how much revenue you can generate. Uh, you know, everybody talks about the same percentage hold of, you know, six to nine, or eight and a half, nine percent, which you get when you get up to, you know, when you get up to scale. And then, you know, what your margins are on that sort of uh, revenue that you're going to earn. And in our particular case, our, our margins are probably better than most because, you know, we're trying to do it sensibly. So um, for our existing shareholders and our future shareholders, it's clearly there and we're going to get to it and, and, and do it in a sensible fashion. Uh, we are dealing with an industry that is where the number of competitors increases by the day as people try to enter this space. At some point, there'll come a consolidation. Uh, as you look out into the future, is SCORE an acquirer or is it a company that maybe is acquired for all the strengths that you've uh, addressed? So I can't answer the second part of that because you have to ask the guys who might be interested in wanting to acquire us, right? I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're on this path and it's a very unique and a distinct path. And um, people are already starting to recognize that um, because we're accomplishing stuff that, that, that seems to make sense, it's, you know, in terms of how to build, to build the model and, and to build the business. From our perspective, in terms of acquisition, um, you know, there are potentially some very interesting opportunities out there for us. Yes. And, and uh, you know, without giving away too much, it's, it's kind of not what you would think. I mean, it would be companies that help us move further down the road faster. And, Again, it's not so much about the users because we've got the users, right? I mean, and, and, but I think, you know, the one thing I didn't mention actually is everybody thinks we're a sports media company. We're actually, sport, we're actually a, a technology company. And the reason we're very successful in the Razor days and in the Blackberry days was because we had engineers building this amazing product. And, you know, um, when, we, when we set out to build our betting app, um, you know, yes, we did a deal with Betworks to give us the back end technology, but we built, natively in iOS because you know it just that's what we do and we have engineers to do that and that's the most adaptable to be able to doing things in the future so and integrating it into our media app right so you know and as we take on more and more of that responsibility I think people are starting to recognize you know that we, we, we try to make everything look really simple that's the, the key like you as a user you know, as a media user, it is a better, just surprise and delight you every day and make it simple as pie, right? Just, just don't confuse me. Don't make me go where I don't want to go. Just let me do what I want to do. Give me all the data, give it to me fast. What's actually happening on the surface, you see this pretty little duck floating on the pond underneath his legs are going like freaking crazy, right? Cause you've spent hundreds, tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of engineering uh, time, engineers time in developing this thing. And, and, you know, I think that, 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 you know, if there were companies out there um, from a technology standpoint that could help us, that might be something that's interesting. Or from a data, you know, we're collecting all this data and all this analytics that we study and review every minute, every day. Um, and that's another one of these, we're just scratching the surface. You know, everybody, you know, we're, we're a digital company in the digital space and, you know, everybody's just jonesing to try to do things that, that make betting easier. Now, go out a year or two from now. Think of yourself as a digital company. Think about all the interesting things that other companies are doing in the digital space. You get in a new, you know, you get in uh, to order an Uber, and it knows where you're going on Thursday night before you do, right? Because you're going to work out. You want to order some Chinese food on Sunday from Uber Eats or whatever you're, or, or you know, you don't need. It's a boom. Oh, how do they know it's Sunday and I want Chinese food again? I mean, there's very that, and that's simple stuff for for digital companies. We're not even scratching that surface yet, so. 
um, you know, there's lots of things that are brewing out there and opportunities that people aren't really focusing on yet, but I think could be interesting acquisition opportunities for us. So that's- so we've, got, that's we've covered a lot of ground, John. Uh, and Sorry. maybe <laughs> just to conclude this by uh, addressing investors. If you're talking to a prospective investor, why is it he or she should put their money into SCORE Media? Well, you know, on the surface, we're, we're really one of the only pure, you know, media companies in, 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 in the space. There's nobody else that's, that's really a digital media company that's in the betting space. So number one, we have a unique proposition. Number two, our approach is sensible and differentiated from everybody else in terms of how we're, how we're building the model. And we're also, you know, we're, we're building it for the long term. So what I say in our investor meeting, quite honestly, is there's four, there's really four pillars to our success. One is the brand and our user base, the brand that everybody loves and the user base that's highly engaged, that's not going anywhere, that's growing, and that is hugely engaged. The other two is the product. The product is um, unique. It's an integration of media, providing a media embedding experience that nobody else does and everybody else is trying to figure out but we're there already and we're enhancing it and we're just starting it. The third element is the opportunity. Um, you know, uh, it's just starting. I mean, I don't, you look at one analyst, another analyst and the numbers just keep growing and you look on a state by state basis as regulated legal and safe betting takes place. It's going to continue to open up not only a state by state basis, but the market is going to, is going to continue to grow. So I think from an opportunity standpoint, you're not going to find something as dramatic as this in any other industry. And the third thing is I'll talk about our team. You know, we're a proven team. Um, you know, we've been in this business a long time. Uh, we wouldn't be in this business, quite frankly, if we didn't have, hadn't spent all this money and time in developing our brand and the, and the media base that we have. Uh, we know how to build businesses um, and, and, and uh, we're, we're, we're pretty nimble. We don't have legacy shit stuff to worry about, sorry. And um, um, we recognize opportunities that other people don't recognize. So I would say there's probably no better place for an investor to be if they wanna be in this, spe in this space for the future than to come along with us for the ride. And, um, and it's gonna be terrific. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, John, this has been a great overview. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your insights and for your enthusiasm. <laughs> I can't help it. Sorry, Frank. It's just the way I am. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. You're welcome.